Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. Today, I have Alex with me, and we're going to talk, we're going to talk about being resilient and knowing your way in life, because Alex has a very interesting story. I'll let him get into it. And so, we're going to talk about being resilient and knowing your way in life, as you guys well, no, I um, have a disability and cerebral palsy, but that <laughs> that doesn't seem to stop me. I <laughs> yeah, 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 cerebral palsy in me seems to get along. <laughs> there are days, <laughs> there are days I just want to shoot cerebral palsy, but other days they are not. Um, <laughs> they they one of those medium days where you think, okay, why did I get this disability? But other than that, I love it. But without me family, I'm going Alex, take it away. Thank you very much. So thank you for the opportunity today. I really appreciate it. I'm really happy to be here. So I guess what I want to talk about today is the uh, power of authenticity, as you mentioned earlier, finding your way through life. And I guess even though I'm only a 22-year-old guy, I, uh, I've experienced quite a bit and I've um, – I've taken sociology in, in university, and I guess you see consumer behavior and human behavior, and you just want to see people do the right thing, and you see a lot of people get sucked into the societal pressures of today, and I was one of those guys, and it's just, it's not that good, and I see people like yourself doing amazing things with, um, despite your circumstances, and it's amazing to see, and I think we need to talk about how amazing people can be, and everyone can be amazing if they are willing to live up to their full potential. Yes, we do. We do, and um, as you guys know, I am in my first semester of, well, almost first my first semester of journalism school, fashion journalism school, thank you very much. Not journalism school per se, but fashion journalism school. And now we've been given the opportunity for our last and final sketchbook to do um, a sketchbook on technology, which I'm going to be using the persona of prosthetic legs, and I'm going to be talking about that for um, the final sketchbook, because I come at it with, I mean, she, my teacher said to me, oh, you need to do 3D printing, you need to do all this. I'm like, yeah, 3D yeah. printing is being used in medical field, and sociology is uh, the next up-and-coming thing. Exactly. Since yeah. I spread with um, journalism because we all beat to a different drum. We all, when she, when my teacher goes, you need to do 3D printing, and that's it. I'm like, yeah. hello, please. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to see you know me back. And it's like, <laughs> go with what you originally planned. I'm like, I'm going with fake legs and 3D plenty mixing exactly. the two. Hello, it's not, I beat to a different drug. So, therefore, exactly. um, Alex, why did you study sociology and what made you say, okay, this is a um, kicker to go back to university and go um, back to my roots and study people? And, yeah, so yeah, why so, made you go? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I was lucky enough to have amazing parents growing up, still around and everything, so I love them, and I um they taught me to be the most genuine person I can always be, and I think that kind of bled through to then stay true to me for the rest of my life and kind of became my own personal brand, if you will. So um, in high school, I was in student council, music, sports, all that kind of stuff, and I kind of want, didn't want to go into the typical engineering, law school, medical school, just because I wasn't, I wasn't kind of that guy, and I think I, there's a lot of pressure to do that kind of stuff. And I, and I thought to myself, I want to do what I want to do, and I think – at the end, it paid off. I wanted to learn about human behavior, how people reacted. I, uh, so my major is in criminology, but I also took many of sociology courses, and they all tie in together. But um, And now I'm in business. I'm doing marketing. So, But I would not be where I am 
if I didn't have the sociology background because if if you don't if you don't understand how people react and are in situations, you won't be able to read them. And I think seeing how society pressures people in the way it does, I think we need to really focus on that. It's okay to be different. It's okay to go against like the grain of the wood and like you said, play the beat to your yeah. own drum and just do what you want to do because that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, higher power gifted me with cerebral palsy. So why not? I don't have the capabilities in my legs that I once did as I get older. So why not use the capabilities of being a gifted fashion journalist with a different point of view? Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Because being resilient, we're all going to get knocked down in the life. We're all going to get knocked down in yeah. God knows what called life. We're all going to see stuff at young ages we don't want to see. And exactly. we have to bounce back. We have to yeah. be resilient. I mean, yeah. you can sit there and have a war with me party. Oh, my life is so tough. Oh, my life is so tough. We say, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Or you yeah. can have, okay, this is my life. I might as well accept it and move on and deal with it. Exactly. I fully agree. Fully agree. Yeah. I think, so, okay. Um, yeah, I think we talk about self-awareness and being aware of who you are and how, like, you have to accept it at one point because a lot of people, as you said, will be like, oh, poor me, poor me. And that comes into self-victimization and self-loathing, which is never healthy for anybody. And people who are around you like that, you, want, you don't want to surround yourself with people who are going to appreciate you for when you're down. They want people to appreciate for you for who you can be and what you are and help you when you're down, but not love you when you're down. If you have friends that are around you that are surrounding yourself with who like the person you are when you're down or when you're sad, it's not someone you want to be around because you want to surround yourself with people who are going to lift you up and support you no matter what's happening in your life. Yeah, and always surround yourself with people who are smaller than you and do not have a disability. That helps even, (laughs) yeah, that helps too. And so I noticed on your blog, when I quickly looked at it last night, I noticed some basketball. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What does that have to do with anything? I know, I know. So I guess I'll get into a little bit. I grew up, uh, my, both my parents were born in Scotland. They're both Scottish, so I grew up with soccer. Still play it a lot. But I uh, I got into basketball when the Raptors, and Vince Carter kind of came and everything and kind of transformed the game here for Canada. And I think I really fell in love with the, the yeah. statistics of the sport. I, um, I'm pretty good with numbers, I guess, some people would say, and I love the stats and the numbers behind the game just as much as I love watching the game. So I created a a basketball index, um, Pete's basketball index and blog, and it's, uh, it ranks players based on their performance of the game that night or last season on nine variables, and then I created an algorithm to be able to rate them. And now I just talk about pretty much about the upcoming trends in basketball, and I think as a, as a, as a surface value, it's a, just a basketball blog, but at the same time, it's proven to people that I care about, like, the social interaction basketball has, and the deeper connection of the main main message being communication, being able to communicate with people and consistently and having a shared interest. And I think some sports and interests are just like that, but you also got to look at the deeper side of it, and that is having a common goal and a common interest with someone to be able to communicate to them with. I like that. I like that. Using, using basketball as a way of communicating with people. Using yeah. basketball as a ice like it, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, it definitely I, helps in interviews and everything like that. Thinking, Alex. Thank you. I Thank love you. your way of thinking. And by the way, um, by the way, I am a Canadian at heart. I could have got dual citizenship, but it didn't. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I could have, I, um, I, can still get it. I just haven't. Maybe after my journalism is where you guys all get dual citizenship because my 
mom grew up in Toronto. She was, oh, nice. She was born in Toronto, grew up in the Bahamas, but I know exactly where the basketball stage is because yeah. it's right on the way to the airport. Exactly. No, it is. Yeah. And so I, yeah, yeah, I pretty much know where that basketball stadium is. And so why, that being said, why don't we see teams coming out of, I mean, we see the Blue Jays, but that's about it. Why don't we see these phenomenal basketball teams coming out of Canada, in the U.S. I mean, we see the Blue Jays, but that's about it. Yeah, they didn't do too well this season either. But I think the uh, the sports world in Toronto, um, I have a few friends who work for the uh, Maple Leafs and the MLSC, and I think yeah. Yeah. one of the biggest things is the Leafs are doing very well right now. Toronto Maple Leafs, they've had a rebrand in the couple, past couple of years. They uh, yeah, brought a new coach and everything. Um, Toronto Raptors as well, they're uh, – they have their two big, the two big guys, Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. And, you know, it's it's hard for a Canadian market because being the only Canadian team, we the North, right, it's, it's phenomenal. It's great being a Canadian fan watching it. But at the same time, it is it is isolating for the team to be the only one in the in the market. And I think there's a lack of sometimes uh, resources and stuff like that. And I think a lot, not, not financial resources, but I think of marketing. And you can only get so much. And I think maybe Canadian market isn't always the best place for a big player such as, Isaiah Thomas or Steph Curry or LeBron James to go to because, you know, you know, all the big players and stuff are down in the West Conference. And I think it's a little bit different right now. So I think it's, it's hard to read and it's hard to judge. And I'm just a fan pretty much. So I don't know too much about it, but it is, uh, it is tough in Canada for that. <laughs> yeah. It is tough. And, um, with the buffoon we have and the United States president and I'm like can someone just <laughs> pack me in bag and make me appear in Toronto can, so, <laughs> can someone just pack me in bag and make me appear in Toronto no I'm dead serious <laughs> when I say that because I can someone just book me a one way ticket up to Toronto so I can actually have a life with health insurance let's stay yeah. with here you guys have Better health insurance than we do. Yeah, we're very lucky up here. We're very lucky. Yes, yes. Lucky. And I thought I thought about I I seriously thought about applying for my dual citizenship once Donald yeah. Trump went into office. No, and I still <laughs> plan to do that. I just have to. Um, I just have to now be working because I um, lost my mom. But I I know I can rework it in a way that I can just say, look, I lost my mom, but my mom has a Canadian passport. And Alex, I think you inspired me to do that project this summer because it's going, well, it's going to take a long time. But, yes, I'm going to get my dual citizenship because I need it. I need it. Just, I need it just because um, if I needed, if I needed to go someplace um, out of the U.S., Canada wouldn't be it. Yeah, exactly. I think Canada you'll make it work. It. You'll make it work. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, so, Alex, yeah. what is your favorite book? What is your favorite book that you the go back to time and time again? It's actually a new book. Um, I used to read a lot of, uh, like a lot of fiction books when I was younger, but now I've gotten to the more nonfiction. I'm reading a book called Invisible Influence by Jonah Berger. And it's, uh, it's, it kind of ties in social, sociology and uh, business, which is my two, my two passions, I guess. And it brings into how you can influence people with the way you act and how you can make people, like not act bad, make people listen to you more effectively and make people follow you if you want to be a great leader and stuff like that. And I think it talks about even simple tips, like if you're a bartender or a server at a restaurant, if you repeat the order to the customer, they're more likely to tip you higher. And it's just, it's a, it's a lot of a breakdown of how people socialize. And I think 
being in business now and having sociology behind my back, I think it's a great tool, and I would recommend the book to anybody because I would read it multiple times over and over again. And, Alex, what is your biggest entrepreneurial moment? And then if you had to be educated by anyone, inside or outside your field, dead or alive, who would it be and why and what would you ask them? Okay, that's a good question. I would, uh, my entrepreneurial achievement would probably be, even though I'm not, my basketball blog isn't much of a business, starting out, I think, so when I came to Toronto, I started it a month later, and I, I gained a lot of traction, um, most on Facebook, a lot on LinkedIn, actually. LinkedIn's been a, a huge platform for me, and I think being able to see, to show people, again, and go back to communication, being able to show people that I can communicate consistently, the content isn't always the most important thing, I think, when you're trying to prove something. I think it's the message you're sending that I can communicate constantly, consistently, and and to a high sense of credibility. And I think that was probably the biggest thing. It wasn't maybe one moment, but I think it's the the constant ongoing process of me writing my blog, adding in some sociological perspectives on LinkedIn as well now. And I think I'm getting a good response and good engagement. And even though I I even uh, now I got picked up to work uh, social media consulting for a couple of businesses on the side. So I think, you know, when you put yourself out there and you start doing what you love. on that. Yeah, thank you. By the way. um, it's it's definitely you put yourself out there, you do what you love, and you just stay true to yourself. And you gotta hustle and grind, and you just gotta do it. And you gotta like sometimes you gotta stay up late, sometimes you gotta wake up early, as I'm sure you know. You just gotta put in the work, and and things good things will happen. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. I um I just I'll probably get probably ten new fans of my podcast because um. On um, we were talking about social sharing in um, my gun was in class social sharing yeah. on social media and um, my teacher asked me she goes well she asked all of us she goes in the spirit of social sharing I might well, share an article from UK Vogue that I wrote and what yeah. are you all working on so I gave them and my podcast and yeah. she goes I can't wait to listen and I'm like okay <laughs> okay that's awesome. so it's pretty cool that it's pretty cool but it yeah. all it's all coming down to the communications and the context if people exactly. don't like your communication style and my fans like me being really authentic with them exactly the reason they mom on to sale the palsy. I mean, I get one when a new episode launches on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I which tomorrow will be Tuesday, and yes, this episode will go out on Tuesday. <laughs> I get one hundred downloads and then I get downloads throughout the week too. Yeah. Exactly. So well, I think to go back to Yeah, it's awesome. So I think to go back go to the ahead. question is um the one, the per, one person I guess dying into that, talking about that, kind of got me thinking about the authenticity. I think the one person I would love to meet and dead or alive would be Gary Vaynerchuk. I know that's probably a popular answer nowadays, but um, he really, he really sparked my, I guess, interest for marketing and business. I think he has, he, he has a great story. He came from, I guess, virtually nothing with his parents being immigrants and stuff, and just being coming over and doing the things he has, growing business, and just the way he talks and is online. He's very authentic. He's very bare bones, but he tells it how it is, and I think I think that's what you got to do. you got to tell it how it is in a respectable manner, obviously. And he is always the one preaching, the one of the first businessmen preaching that, um, or businesswoman for that matter as well, a doesn't business person, um, that you have to surround yourself with the people you want to be. So you, I think that's the biggest thing, especially being a, a younger male, I guess, you see a lot of people surrounding themselves with inauthentic people, people that make them want to do, I guess, uh, bad things, make them want to get sucked into a certain lifestyle that's not good for them. And I think he kind of, along with my parents being so great, kind of pulled me out of a, a little bit of a rut I was in. And I think being authentic to myself and doing things for me and the people I love was probably the biggest lesson, message, uh, message I learned from him. And I think that's that's what you got to do. you got to do what you love and you got to, as we, as I keep saying, you gotta hustle and grind until good things come, and then go even harder. Yeah, yeah, and then working even harder. No, I as of today, 
I am considering myself a full-time journal, journalist who yep. teaches on the side, and uh, not yep. because I need to. Um, I can make more money off books and speaking engagements and a podcast yep. than I can teaching, but I love the teaching field. I love yep. the teaching field. And so exactly. I've been coming on back and forth. Should I, um, with this new degree, should I quit my teaching skills? And people have said, no, no. Yeah. You don't quit your teaching skills. No. You don't. <laughs> you don't. My, my, boss, my boss goes, I don't want to see you leave. My yeah. friends go, no. Lynn, if you quit your teaching job, You'll be stuck in the office, and it's not good. <laughs> yeah, and you love good. it. Right? Talk about talk about uh, talk about being authentic. You, um, the kids will be authentic to me. The kids exactly. will tell me, "Oh, I, I, I lost. Uh, I had the kid lose a tooth the other day." Talk about being authentic, geez, and uh, in class too. And it's like really. And so, yeah. talk about being authentic. These kids will come up and tell me how it is, yet they don't care about CB. Yeah. <laughs> as, lo- as long as I, as long as we give the kids attention, and as yeah. long as we care about them, they don't care about CB. No. Or they, they may care about basketball more than they care about. CP just to swing it around to your blog, but they care about sports just as just as well as the rest of us. They don't care yeah. about a physical disability. It's the yeah. adults that care about the physical disability. If, exactly. If I can if I can learn how to communicate better with these adults, that would help me out. So, Alex. I know you have questions for me. I know that because you yeah. texted me yesterday. And I did, so I did. why don't you go ahead and ask those questions and then we can take it from there. Yeah, sure. So I guess knowing your podcast and everything, looking at a few episodes and just loving it, every second of it, I think what is what what gets you up in the morning to get you to do this every day? What is the biggest inspiration, I guess, in your uh, – inspirational motive or inspirational thing in your life right now that gets you wanting to do this because you're working so hard, if I say. And, um, yeah, yeah. So what, what is motivating? What is insp- inspiring you? Well, right now, um, getting this degree is motivating yeah. me to um, keep on keep on doing this podcast even though I'm – not going, even though it is sponsored, I'm not making any money off of it yet, but I'm yeah. going to just keep looking at it, and then yeah. we'll see what, um, because, quite frankly, a journalist who does a podcast gives has a lot more accreditations than the average joke. So, I'm, yeah. like, I was self-taught before uh, almost six and a half years, and I'm like, by the seventh year, I didn't know my 30th birthday present was going to be me going back to journalism school, but yeah. I'm like, no, no, something's got to change here. Something's yeah. got to change here, because I was stuck in that rut of, yeah. I hate my nine to five. I yeah. want to quit. I, yeah, I even, um, I retired from teaching preschool, which, which was a good yeah. thing because they almost throw me insane. But I'm like, <laughs> I can't necessarily be a quitter yeah. when my legal name is Win. One, I yeah. can't quit. Two, I can't, um, I can't say to my fan base, I'm quitting. Two, yeah. two I can't. I can't say to my fan base, I'm quitting. I mean, that that doesn't go with the analogy of winning the game. Let's just put 
put it that way. That doesn't go with the analogy of winning basketball game or winning baseball game or winning exactly. a dog game. No, yeah. no. And I exactly. can't say to my fan base, I'm quitting. And so I'm switching careers. I'm thinking myself, thinking of myself as a full-time journalist who does teaching on the side one day a week just to get me out of the house, just to get me communicating with people and being authentic. Exactly. Yeah, I think the key word you're talking there is authentic again at the end. I think you're being authentic is what you want to do, and I think that is the biggest motivation for anybody or inspiration for anybody. I think, like you said, you were sick of like you're even like the 9 to 5, and I think you, you, loved, you knew what you loved, and you had to do it. And I, and like you said, you don't want to disappoint people. You don't want to let people down. And I think it was more for, for yourself at any point because you're the one that's doing this. You're the one putting all the hard work in. And I think you being authentic is the most important thing to anybody, especially as a, a, role model, a role model as yourself. And I think, like you said in the podcast, you got to keep – you're going to keep doing it like, as you are. And it's, something's going to come out of it, even if it's maybe not physically, maybe not, I don't know, materialistic. Something's going to come out of it, and I think you'll know when that happens. And I think you have that moment in yeah. your head that's going to – it's going to keep going, and I think, I don't know, you're doing a great job so far, and just you got to keep hustling, well, and everybody is, and it's great. Well, thank it's you. Great. But uh, thank you. I am, I try, and granted, there's this days where I just want to bury my head in the sand, but right yeah. now I'm at the point in my life where I will um, fully but surely make the clear switch. It's not going to be. This year, it's not for me next year. It's going to be when I physically can't be in the classroom anymore and I need, I need that journalism degree. I'm, I, yeah, ugh, yeah. I hate to say exactly. it, but I think I'm going to be one of those Stephen Hawking types who types with his eyes if I have to. I mean, I'm, I hate to say that, but if yeah. I have to type with type out books with my eyes, I will. Like yeah, yeah. Honest, you know, it's sick. But I you're will. willing to though. I, mean, which is the best I, part. I will um, do education until I can't physically yeah. do it anymore, and then I will switch over to journalism. Exactly. I think one of the biggest things as well is. As you said, some days you want to bury your head in the sand, and the the fans and the well, some of them probably most of them don't, and like the the people you follow and your, for my case, like your classmates, your colleagues, they don't see that. They don't see you going home and working to the late hours of night. They don't see you putting in all the hard work. They just see the end result. No. Right? And I think, and I think that's the biggest see, thing for yourself. No, they just see yeah. the end result. They don't see the fifteen hours of okay, exactly. and that's how that's we do this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because no, my um, my school is the typical school, and luckily my school is working with me because of my CP and they're making the journalism degree work. But my yeah. school isn't designed for um, civil policy, no, it no, it should be. I yeah. don't think most col most colleges have the special ed department. But yeah. they are not specifically designed for um, di the disabled. They yeah. may give scholarships because of your disability, and they may help you along the way, but yeah. they expect you to do the work. Yeah, exactly. And no one ever sees a struggle, right? So that's, I oh, think that's when it's no. all down to you, I think. As much as support you can have on your outer circle or anything like that or inner circle, I think at the end of the day it is up to you. And I think you, as you said earlier in the podcast, you can't you can't keep blaming your you can't keep blaming other people around. You can't blame yourself. It's all up to you. And I think us uh, similar mindsets we uh, we're driven enough. And I think a lot of fellow entrepreneurs and people around us are the ones that are they're the ones by themselves. They're, I'm in my room by myself doing the homework. I'm, I don't have people helping me. You don't have people helping you with other stuff. It's, you got to do it yourself, and I think you got to really drive and have that motivation within to be able to do these kind of yeah. things. Yeah, if you want to send the years of back to college at the right old age of 30, um, yeah. I'll be graduating by the time I'm 
32 with my that's the and then yeah. that's yes that's it <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's it i have <laughs> the i have the motivation to go back to school not to say that i don't have the motivation to go back to school to uh, attain another degree but i yeah. i want to move on i want to go and go into the journalism field and be a strong drama and those who don't want to be with me, you can exactly. exit stage right. You can exit <laughs> exactly. stage right. But I'm here exactly. to bend the drama for those who can't speak. I mean, exactly. physically and mentally. For those yeah. who can't speak, I'm here to bend the drama and be disabled advocate there with the fashion journalism degree. Exactly. I think that's great. And so you had a question about my book. You I had did. I had a very interesting I guess, question about my book. More so as a writer, and I think since I've, I've just started recently, obviously, with my blog and stuff, but you've been writing for quite some time, and I think what is, I guess, in a general sense, for any type of writing, uh, and whether book or journal, article, what was the greatest setback you consistently experienced when writing, and uh, how do you how do you get past that writer's block? Well, because I use Siri, because I can't type, yeah. I I have to use Siri, and yeah. Siri and me get along quite nicely, but Siri is getting a new little sister called. Greg is naturally speaking. Thank you very much. There you go. Greg naturally <laughs> speaking is coming in my life. So they <laughs> can take a break. They can take a break. No, and they is the biggest pain in the neck of my books. <laughs> you guys who don't know this, you see beautiful books coming out of when they the biggest pain in the neck. I look because um, Siri only goes for a certain amount of time. Dragon, naturally yeah. speaking, you can go on and on and on and yeah. keep your flow and not get in the writer's block. But yeah. when I get writer's block, I go work out. I go work out. I, I figured out the first chapter of my national novel writing book, Wall at PT yeah. Today. I figured out the I figured out my autobiography while walking in the exo skeleton. So I yeah. can work out. I I typically try and do twenty minutes on, twenty minutes off, and yeah. then I um, when I get bored of doing the homework, <laughs> which the reason why I um, actually didn't go to a traditional journalism school is because I can't, I can't focus that well on yeah. quickly writing. I need the variety yeah. of uh, another class. I need one writing class. I need another variety of fashion class, which yeah. requires no writing. So, um, well, it's just a little, but um, I need that variety. My brain, my brain gets bored, and most writers disabled or not, they get bored. They get bored yeah. in the middle of the book and then um, put the manuscript down and then go back to it in a month. So my yeah. best advice for writers and just when you get bored, walk away from the iPad, walk away yeah. from the computer, go, I, I make myself go have a lunch upstairs away from my office. My office yeah. is, and also my bedroom, my office is set at the bottom of a set of stairs, and I yeah. make myself at noon, noon my time, go upstairs and yeah. have lunch and sit by window and look out that window. And so when you're bored of the UIN and get my walk Go walk, go walk away from the book, or go walk away from the blog, in your case, Alex, and yeah. 
that's the best way to do it. All right. I keep that in mind. I got that written down. <laughs> go, yeah, go walk away. Go walk yeah. away. You can, you, um, you can probably go, um, I know there's a more, I know there's a small boy down the street in Toronto, I know. So yeah. go take a walk. Go take yeah, a walk, um, and don't get on a subway system. I know, I, I know <laughs> it's, um, it's difficult to leave yeah. a book up on folks, but yeah. I know when I, um, it's so funny because I, one of the classes I'm taking is, <laughs> Um, content for fashion journalism, and yeah. one of the things they're making me do is build a blog. Well, I'm yeah. going to use Siri, but when I get by his blog, I'm just going to walk away from my own book and come back to oh. it. Because when you sit there with by his blog, it's the worst. You're sitting, yeah, you bang your head against the wall. And yeah. it's like, this is no fun, and then you want to <laughs> give it up. Yeah. No. And then you want to give up the blog completely, or the book, uh, book man to use books completely. And a lot yeah. of writers get by his book. My, my advice is walk away from the paper, walk away from the book, walk away from, you can't necessarily walk away from doing homework, but you can at least take a 20-minute um, yeah. brain break and walk away from it. Uh-huh. One of the things my um, school, my work school implements is brain break. When yeah. the kids come in from another class, we take a 20-minute brain break to let their brains relax. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's the best thing since the slice spread because it gives them five minutes to have their brain wander. And so yeah. I say take a brain break. Take a brain break from staring at a computer screen and staring at a blog post. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all you can do. That's yeah. all you can do. I mean, once you get um, my response, go take a walk outside. Go, um, and I'm being dead silly, go take a walk down to your favorite coffee shop. Go take a yeah. walk down to Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons yeah. is similar <laughs> to Dunkin' Donuts, you guys, for those of yeah. you that don't know the reference. Um, but go do something other than staring at a computer screen, I'm staring at an iPad, thinking, yeah. what am I going to write next? I have no more powers to write. Yeah. All right. I like that. So do you have any more questions for me? No. Just thank you very much for the opportunity on the show. I well, really appreciate you're it. Welcome. I'm a big fan. You're welcome. It's awesome talking to you. You are welcome. And you know, you guys, you should share these interviews out. Everyone should share these interviews out. Yeah. I mean, we, um, we, being authentic, we need a community of authentic people to share yeah. these interviews out. I mean, not very many, um, disabled or getting their journalism degree, thank you very much. And yeah. so, um, that's what, that's what keeps me motivated to do this yeah. is um, is now I finally have the professional training. Now I finally will have the professional training to stand yeah. behind all this work I've been doing over the years since uh-huh. I've been 23 years old. And yeah. so I just think when you get by this block, be, be authentic as you can and yeah. walk away from it. And just just don't focus on it because I know for me, I can get in the zone and then it will be 12 o'clock and then it, yeah. I can get in the zone and not come out of the zone. But just yeah. walk away when you have by your spot 
just go take a walk, turn on the news, yeah. turn on the um, something, turn on a, a fish tank. They have videos now, you guys. Yeah. They all actually <laughs> fish tanks. So um, <laughs> when I say turn on a fish tank, I mean it. And I'll just go take a walk down to your favorite coffee shop. I don't care. But yeah. um, but why is one is a bad is a bad 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 thing bad thing yeah. and all the um all the writers have it and so it's it's a pretty bad thing but we're going to try and stop it and I appreciate you guys listening to this interview with Alex and I. And we'll have all of Alex's information in the show notes. And I appreciate Alex's time. I know he's extremely tired from a long <laughs> Monday at work. Thank yes, you very yes. much. It's, no problem. When this interview started, when this interview started, it was 6 p.m. already, Eastern Standard yes. Time. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> I can't keep my eyes open up. So I yeah. am, I am surprised you were chipper and able to do this interview. I was surprised. <laughs> I thought, oh no, I'm going to get a text from the Maryland saying it's too late. No, I got a text. Sounds great. Sounds yeah. great. And I'm just thinking, oh boy. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> long, long, long day, day but it was worth it. It was awesome. Yeah. So I'm a little excited to do this interview, talk about being outside. But, and so um, I am going to let you guys go, and I hope you guys enjoy another fabulous episode with Alex and I. And please, 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 please share this episode out. Please capture it and share it on social media so that people know about this interview and let's make the butterfly of wisdom community because we can get. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.